you know, over the years, there have been a couple of organizations that literally have paid people to watch this program and record it, every word, and then they would parse every word that was said and try to make it look silly if they could, leaving the connectors out and putting the words together. Then they'd pass it out and try to do everything they can to hurt us. They call that hate watch. Well, uh, there was an outspoken atheist whose name was Mike Adams. He used to be among these groups. He, he just watched all by his own, but he cursed us. So this campus radical is here today. Take a look. Mike Adams was praised as an atheist and liberal criminology professor at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. But all that changed when he became a Christian. In 2007, Mike sued UNCW for denying his promotion to full professor and hired the ACLJ to represent him in what would become a seven-year legal battle. I've been an advocate for the First Amendment, telling people to stand up for their rights for years. I can't turn around and then duck and run. In his book, Letters to a Young Progressive, Mike exposes the radical beliefs in America's universities and gives much needed advice to conservative students on how to survive on campus. Well, with us now is living proof of at least one conservative teaching at a college in America. Mike Adams uh, has written a book. He's called Letters to a Young Progressive and How to Avoid Wasting Your Life Protesting Things You Don't Understand. Mike <laughs> Adams, good to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me. You were voted Teacher of the Year in your college, University of North Carolina in Wilmington, twice, uh -huh. two times. You were Teacher of the Year. I was. But they turned against you. Why? Well, in 1998 and 2000, I was uh, professor of the year, but then later on in 2000, I actually converted to Christianity. And I'll tell you something, Pat, it's the What's people it? who talk about tolerance and diversity the most often that are actually the most uh, diametrically opposed to it. So I learned that the hard way. Well, you know, I would think down in North Carolina, nice people down there in Wilmington, I have a lot of many friends at the UNC, uh -huh. I, I, it, it doesn't look like a hotbed of radical left. What's the deal? Oh, it really is because, you know, I, it, Pat, our universities don't serve the people. I, yes. I mean, the professors come from all across the country, of course, and there are all kinds of leftist professors who would love to take a job at UNC Wilmington and, and work down there by the coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, they come from everywhere, and uh, they really don't serve the interest of the folks. And I know that. I used to be one of them hired in 1993, and uh, fortunately, I snapped out of it. Well, what did you believe in those days yourself? Well, you know, I, I had, had lost my faith in college, and, uh, you know, I was a secularist, and uh, it's, it's funny, that's one of the reasons why I used to watch the 700 yeah. Club and just hurl profanities at people like yourself and yeah. Jay Seculo, because I believed in all that stuff. Well, and, fortunately, uh, I couldn't yeah. hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I drove up so you'd forgive me, Pat. Yeah. I hope you'll accept my apology. <laughs> but uh, but I believed in all that stuff, uh, you know, and I had a radical well, uh, secular believe? worldview. What specifically did, did you believe? Well, uh, uh, I, I actually was somewhat of a cultural relativist back then yeah. and, and thought that we ought not to judge other cultures by the standards of our own culture. And, you know, that collided with reality a few years after that. Uh, when I was on a teaching exchange in Quito, Ecuador, yeah. and I actually went into a prison and I spent a few hours in there. And I actually saw, Pat, for example, a savage beating of a prisoner uh, while I was in there. I mean, they, they club people in there and, and beat them severely and deny them due process. They and, is in the, 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 uh, the jailers, system of justice, the system yeah. of justice yeah. uh, in, in Latin America. Yeah. They'll deny people trials for years for a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. And I went in there and experienced that firsthand. And I realized you know, you know, that's a worldview that doesn't make any sense. I mean, there has to be an absolute moral standard well, out there. that was the thing. If you were an intellectual, you could say this, this yeah. thing is an absolute. That was the big deal. And, yeah. and actually, uh, one clerk of a, of a justice, I think Justice Vincent, got that into the Supreme Court. You know, the, the Supreme Court, there's no such thing as an absolute. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. No there you go. Right. But uh, that worldview did indeed uh, collide with the reality. And so that was just beginning uh, uh, of my process of waking up. Well, what did they do to you once, once that became known that you were no longer a relativist? Well, it's interesting. Uh, later on, after I had an experience on, on death row, actually, in mm -hmm. Texas, I was interviewing a mentally handicapped uh, prisoner there, and he actually quoted John 3.16 to me. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had never read the Bible, and I called myself an educated person. Mm -hmm. So I actually went into a study of Christianity 
uh, lasted for about nine months and had that conversion specifically yeah. to Christianity in the year 2000. And shortly after that, I started to criticize the university for its lack of commitment to, ideolog to uh, ideological diversity mm -hmm. and uh, just the incredible um, ideological echo chambers that colleges have become. Yeah. And also their, their strong uh, antipathy towards uh, free speech and religious freedom. And I actually started to speak out about it and eventually write about it on a column for townhall.com. And a few years later, when I went up for that promotion to full professor, the guy who had been counted as the you know professor of the year mm -hmm. two times by his university was judged to be deficient in every single area teaching research and service and so well, who made that determination uh, well I had a, a radical Marxist chair of the department and a, a just Marxist? In North Carolina oh, well, you better believe it and at uh, the entire department really uh, Bible, is, is very well, left. I'm shocked it's true and so yeah. uh, and when that decision was made then uh, you who know who hired a Marxist to teach at that school uh, well an other Marxist <laughs> that's is the that answer a, so the faculty had taken over yeah. the inmates ran the asylum so oh, that's true. that's been the case for a long time certainly and and so when that decision came down, you know, we, we had to decide whether we were going to fight. And fortunately, uh, I had some good friends, including David French, who at that time mm -hmm. was uh, with the ADF. And uh, we got together and we decided we were going to fight that thing, Pat. We had no idea that it was going to be a seven-year uh, lawsuit. Another person that you had mocked, Jay Sekulow, yeah. became your counsel. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, uh, David French had switched over to the ACLJ uh -huh. in, in the middle of the lawsuit. So it ended up being this joint effort. And so Jay was uh, actually actually involved in, in my appeal. So, you know, here I am 15, 20 years later after I used to curse this guy. I've converted and now he's my lawyer. So well, did he win? Uh, we actually had to fight that thing for years going before the Fourth Circuit to actually win a jury trial. And seven years after we filed the suit, we walked into a courtroom for a three day trial in North Carolina. And it took the, uh, the jury less than two hours to return a unanimous verdict in my favor and I won and got the promotion so you got it we won but they don't love you now though. uh not but, so much <laughs> but, but you are what are you now a tenured full professor is that the idea I sure am I sure so am. they can't mess with you anymore or maybe uh, they well can. they can try but I've got some good friends now so uh, <laughs> I'm ready to fight back well, have you been able to gather people around yourself who share the same point of view well, you know, I, I find that a lot of the conservatives on college campuses, they just kind of stay in the closet now. And what they should be doing is using my legal victory to, sure. to realize that you can, in, fi in fact, win. And the problem is, Pat, if all of the conservatives on our college campuses who are afraid of having something done to them, if they would all stand up, then they couldn't target individuals like myself. Yeah. There are plenty, but they're just hiding. And it's time for them to step up. Well, what do you tell uh, young Christians who are going to college? Because, you know, you'd, yeah. you'd think college is supposed to be a big deal, but it's, it's really a brainwashing session for most of these kids. Well, they've got to be prepared. You know, I teach every summer at a worldview ministry now in Colorado called Summit Ministries. Uh -huh. And uh, we teach them worldview training. And that's something the church needs to do more often. Sure. And it's something that parents need to do is uh, to make their kids realize that ideas have consequences and to, to go out there and systematically mm -hmm. study worldview and learn how to defend their faith before they actually go off to college. Yeah. That's the main thing they've got to but do. they're young, impressionable, mm -hmm. 16, 17, 18 years old. They don't have any experience in the world. And suddenly they, they, they thrust into this icy bath of, uh, of Marxism or radicalism or progressive right. thought or whatever you call it. Yeah. Uh, and... That's terrible to think about. Well, I'm pleased to report that we have a university right now that has mm -hmm. uh, close to 7,500 students, and uh, uh, we have seven college presidents who have graduated from our school, and 800, 800 teachers of the year. So uh, we're making a difference. But I, I hope you'll be. Well, you're still down there in North Carolina. I'm still down there. And, I can't uh, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went through seven years of litigation. I wasn't going to leave after the victory, so uh, <laughs> they're stuck with me now. <laughs> well, Mike has, yeah. has got a book. It's called <clears throat> Letters to a Young Progressive. Mike, where do you get your book? Is it available? Uh, you can get that, I think, here at, uh, at your website and also at Amazon uh, as well. Amazon. Yes, indeed. Right. You need to get this. I mean, you letters to a young progressive. I mean, it's tremendous. Mike, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having Courage, me. Courage, brother. God thank bless you. you.